Thanks for joining us on Shannon's Club TV, where we look back on motoring history from an Australian perspective. In each episode, we find out how our feature car performed both on the road and in competition. We'll also meet a proud owner and get the latest market news from the Shannon's auctions team. In today's episode, the 1960s Holden sedans that seemed more dated than dynamic, the FB and EK. In January 1960, almost 10, I failed to notice that the all new FB Holden did not live up to that promise, but was rather a cleverly updated version of the FE FC. This is more obvious when you look at the coupe utility and van versions. The wagon on the other hand used the sedan's C pillar which made it the most rakish of the range. The FB was also heavier so that those 2.5 extra brake horsepower up from 72.5 to 75 were needed just to keep the performance equal to that of the 1948 48215FX, while fuel consumption was 20% heavier. Scant progress indeed. Throughout the 1950s, most of the Holden's rivals played catch up or even overtake. The most obvious examples are the Ford Zephyr, GM's own Vauxhall Velox and Cresta, and the Peugeot 403. Mark, it's uh, not for no reason that the early Holdens were more often seen in motorsport than the uh, FB and EK. Yeah, well, you touched on the main reason for that earlier when you mentioned the FB's increase in weight. But what you also have to take into account is you know, just the, the sheer affection that lots of Holden racers and spectators had for the original Humpy Holdens, the 48215 and the FJ. I mean, those cars continued to race in various categories, including sports sedans, you know, well into the 1970s, so they were very popular. That's yeah. absolutely right, mm. yes. To handle the extra weight, the FB got heavier duty front dampers, wider rear leaf springs, and slightly upgraded brakes. The clutch was beefier, and there was a paper element air cleaner. It was the first Holden with plenum fresh air ventilation. From May 1960, GMH switched to superior Magic Mirror acrylic paint. But the switch has resulted in a rise in demand for the now rare early examples. The EK facelift was introduced in May. Instead of being, quotes, new model, Holden called it improved. Most significantly, the EK was the first Holden with the option of automatic transmission. This was the jerky three-speed hydromatic unit. Naturally, the auto sapped much needed power and the true top speed of an EK hydromatic was just 75 miles per hour, compared with about 82 for a manual. The FB and EK looked horribly dated alongside the sleek new Falcon and the astonishing Chrysler Valiant, introduced in September 1960 and January 1962 respectively. There was probably little to choose in terms of the overall ownership experience between an EK Special and the very popular FC, unless one needed an automatic gearbox. But in those three years, the automotive world had driven on. Mark, at least racers didn't have to wait too long for the EH, did they? Yeah, you? and boy, didn't it come in time. You know, after several years of ignoring Holden's latest models. In the early 1960s, there was a noticeable lack of contemporary Holden models, the FB and EK, competing in motorsport. And the main reason for that was because they were too heavy. In the 12 years between the first 48215 of 1948 and the new for 1960 FB, Holden had allowed its family sedan's curb weight to balloon by 241 pounds, or more than 109 kilograms. For competition use, all of that extra weight was a deal breaker. As a result, most Holden racers in Appendix J touring car racing preferred to stick with their much older but much lighter 48215s and FJs. And there were no FB Holdens entered in the first Armstrong 500 for stock standard road cars 
held at Phillip Island in 1960, which was a conspicuous absence given the mark's clear market leadership at the time. The following year, one EK Holden did front for the 500. However, after a promising start against Ford's XK Falcon, it ended up losing a wheel before being excluded from the results for using non-approved parts in the repair. John, you know, a complacent Holden was clearly asleep at the wheel in performance terms by then, wasn't it? Certainly, mm. but I think it wasn't just performance. If you think about the Austin freeways being so many laps ahead, I think a lot of that would have been down to handling and perhaps brakes as well. Yeah, it was the whole package, wasn't it? In, in terms of the overall mechanical package, frankly, the FB was really very little better mm. than an FJ and worse in terms of fuel economy. Mm. And there are all these other cars coming on, not just the Falcon and the astonishing values, mm. but Peugeot had the, the first the 403 and then the brilliant Superb. 404. Mm. Fiat had the 1500. Uh, it's as if Australia had been left behind, mm. like the island continent <laughs> left behind in another decade. It does make you wonder though, doesn't it? You know, they started with that grey Holden 6 in 1948. Yep. How long it would have taken them to update that engine if they didn't have that competition around them? Because it was doing the job, nice, cheap, reliable peasants transport, well, why you would know, you change it? It's, it's one of the greatest arguments for competition is that it improves the breed in every way. If mm. there's no contest, like in some of the, you know, the Eastern Bloc countries, they can just produce almost anything they like. <laughs> exactly. You know? yeah. And the Holden was in danger of falling into that category where all it really had going for it was reliability and, mm. and cheapness of operation. Thank heavens for competition. I Thank think. heavens for competition. <laughs> in 1962, another EK fronted for the first and only Bathurst six hour at Mount Panorama, but it was clearly no match for the class winning Mini Cooper, nor the pair of Austin freeways in second and third. In finishing sixth in class, the lone EK was a full 16 laps behind the class winner. And in 1963, a lone FB entered the first Armstrong 500 held at Bathurst. Again, Holden's heavyweight was no match for its class rivals, finishing 8th and 15 laps behind the winning Ford Cortina. While motor racing was clearly not the FB's and EK's forte, the EK did at least play a starring role in the 1962 Australian tour of the world-famous Canadian Hell Drivers. Their fleet of EK's enthralled local crowds in thrilling stunt shows, which also added some much-needed pizzazz to the EK. Even so, it was not until the release of the EHS4 in 1963 with its all-new 179 red engine that racers finally embraced the latest model Holden again, and GMH would never again have the luxury of being so complacent. Remember to join the Shannons Club, where you can connect with other enthusiasts around the country. Neil Joyner is my name from the uh, Trafalgar Holden Museum and this is my 1961 EK Holden. I've owned it for probably 15 years or more now. It's a pretty car, if you look at it side on, it's a beautiful looking motor car. The paintwork was showing signs of too much tender loving care and it was wearing thin right through to the undercoat. So we had to do a full body restoration on it, paintwork restoration, and we did all the chrome work as we went through. I think it's come up really well. The interior is almost as new. My favourite bit is the white steering wheel. The white steering wheel, I think, adds an, just a little bit of lift to the whole vehicle. <laughs> Engine ticks over beautifully. Like all of our Holdens, you give them one kick and they're away. Really easy to work with, very easy to maintain. Everybody loves it. You get out on the road and everybody's tooting and giving you the thumbs up. You jump in that car on a nice day, arm out the window, life doesn't get a whole lot better than that. And they look so good on the road. It's just a whole lot of fun. I've been with Shannon's ever since I bought my first old car. They have been sensational and we just uh, love dealing with them. I've got a few of these vehicles. If you ask my wife, I've got too many, but uh, our future plans here are to get more into the history of Holden, back to the 1850s. We're trying to show the Holden story all the way through. It's just going to become one of our permanent displays here. 
and see the sign. Shannon's National Auctions Manager Chris Borobon has dropped by with an update on the FB and EK Holdens. Welcome uh, Chris. Hi. Welcome mate. Uh, the FB and EK, one of the classic Holden ranges, mm. um, production of more than 300,000 over that yep. time. Sedans, wagons or station sedans as they call them. Sedans. Uh, Utes, panel panel vans, vans and utes. So quite a lot. Um, do we see many around at the Shannon's Auctions these days? Interestingly, we're actually seeing more and more coming through, which is nice. Mm. Um, you know, the few being pulled out of garages. Is that um, right? Yeah, a few, you know, deceased estate barn finds coming wow. out. Um, but also a number of examples have been beautifully restored. Um, yeah, to original condition. To original condition. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's really nice to see that come through. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, there, there is quite a following and, uh, you know, there's quite a big club following as well. Mm. Uh, so it's good to see so many back That's on the great. road. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think the station sedan, <sighs> that, that novel idea of yeah. carrying the, the, the sedan yeah. Roo yeah. roof line, that's actually growing on me now. It's yes, pretty, yeah, it's pretty is, good. Yeah. It's quite stylish. I think mm. that they would probably be, the, the wagon would probably be the hero model, wouldn't it? Really? I think so. I, I think it's rarer to find. Mm. And, and definitely if you can find one in the right condition, absolutely. I think it's probably one of those rare variants that come across. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. So which is more popular? Is there more demand for FB or EK? I mean, you look at an FB special. Oh, with that amazing two-toning. Yeah. Oh, with the, yeah. I love that flash down the <laughs> side, but, yes, which you didn't yeah. get on the EK. But then the EK offered auto automatic transmission. So yep. is there yeah. any sort of uh, preference for one model or the other? I'd have to say probably no. I, I, okay. I think it's really it's a so personal similar, preference. Right? It is a personal preference for that mm. one. I mean, some people might prefer the FB because of what you've just mentioned, yeah. and others might go to the EK because well, of the practicality could, of the automatic transmission. You could yeah. crack your knee on yep. the A pillar on either, <laughs> and that panoramic windscreen oh, didn't yeah. it distort yeah. the world? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it was a distorted kind of a car in a way. I mean, <laughs> it was not nearly as new as they tried no. to tell us it was. No, no, no it was a bit of skin of the F, yeah. uh, FC mm. and FE. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Well, you talk about carryovers too when you talk of the panel vans and the utes of course the rear end was a carryover from the previous models yeah. so you know utes and panel vans like when was the last time you saw either an fb or an ek commercial like they just got about 1965 yeah. i think yeah. you know Look, the, i mean that's probably very hard to come across these days yeah, it, yeah i think a lot yeah. of them were run into the ground used for what they were mm. designed to be used for mm. um, and today we probably don't see too many of the panel vans or utes yeah mm. yeah so if you found a, a, a panel van or a ute, would that be, I imagine that would be rarer than any sedan or, or wagon, would that be Probably right? Most likely these days, absolutely, yeah. Mm. yeah. So, so if you found one, restore it to original condition and off you go. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. all the old Holdens are becoming collectible and they're probably they, they not be. quite as valuable as you might think mm. they would be because people seem to have this idea that there's an endless supply of them, but there isn't, yeah, there isn't an endless, endless supply right. of yeah. them. Yeah. 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 Look, I think, you know, the days of finding one out on a farm is, you know, it's becoming far and few today. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. sure there probably is still those barn finds out there to be found, but uh, we're not seeing as many as what we probably used to. Yeah. So from a collect collectible viewpoint, what's the most desirable? Are we looking for the, the special? Is that I think down? so, absolutely. I think the special, mm -hmm. yeah, and as we said, the station sedan, you yeah. know, beautiful looking yeah. car, yes. um, rare again in that variant, uh, panel vans and utes if you can find them. Mm -hmm. Again, they've got to be in good condition because they did rust over the years, yeah, so sure it's did. trying to find yeah. one that is, you know, cosmetically good. So would it be fair to say if you found a nice original FB EK, regardless of body type, that's going to be a collectible car, isn't it? I think it is, and yeah. it's got a good following, so I think you can't go wrong with it. Good. Mm, yeah. Good stuff. Well, thank you very much for joining no us. Right. Thanks, mate. And remember, you'll find all the latest auction results on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like your own competition image of the FB and EK Holdens, visit Autopix, Australia's largest motorsport photo archive. John, it's funny, reflecting on the FB and EK, something that's always intrigued me is they seem to get their styling eras around the wrong way. Now, the FE and FC, to me, were... They look more modern. Far more modern-looking cars. So, like, yes. it, it seems like they went backwards. And the FC special really did have a kind of glamour, didn't it, with yeah. the, to the two-toning and so on. But there's another sense in which the FB was dated, mm. because in, in GM's secret code, which people have begun to work out, FB stood for 1959, but the car didn't come out till 1960. Which, that's actually quite a metaphor for the fact that it was out of date. It came out in the wrong decade. Mm.
Yeah, it was sort of a, a pivotal era for GMH, wasn't it? Because they just enjoyed this massive market dominance yep. for more than a decade with very little competition. That's right. Start of the 1960s, whoa, didn't it take off? It certainly did. Yeah. Yeah, and then you look at the the EJ coming afterwards, mm. and that was like suddenly they they'd taken a great big breath and brought out a, a truly modern car. Modern car, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was an interesting time, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, look at the somewhat compromised FB and EK Holmes, and we'll catch you next time on Shannon's Club TV. Mm.